Hello everyone and welcome to this introduction to machine learning tutorial. In this video, we're going to be going through a binary logistic regression example for beginners. Now, please note that this tutorial is actually video part two. And if you haven't watched part one already, I highly recommend you do that first before watching this video. I'm going to have a link in the description. In part one video, I've explained what is machine learning and then we went through the, mach the machine learning process. So all the steps you have to take when it comes to running machine learning and all the tasks within each step. Then I've explained the problem formulation phase, which is what is the problem we're trying to solve for this tutorial. Then I've explained the packages and libraries we're going to be using for this tutorial, from where to download the code and the raw data for this tutorial. And then we've also covered some of the data pre-processing, which is the exploratory data analysis. In this tutorial, we're going to finish with our data pre-processing phase. So again, investigating our features and our raw data. Then we're going to go through the feature selection phase. So selecting the most important features that actually affect our dependent variable. Then we're going to split our raw data using the holdout validation technique. And at the end, we are going to explain what is logistic regression, how it works and how the maximum likelihood estimation works. And in the last video, we are going to run our logistic regression model and then evaluate our model based on some metrics. Then we are going to tune our hybrid parameters so we can get a better performance. Then we are going to create and run a final model with our selected best performing parameters. And at the very end, we are going to discuss how we can use this logistic regression model in real life scenarios. Right, going to where we left it in video part one, we want to investigate the distribution of Y, which is our dependent variable. And to do this, we're going to use count plot. So I'm going to say sns.countplot, open brackets. I want my X to be the y which is the dependent variable so i can copy and paste the good loan over here i want my data to be uh, the raw data so my data frame and i also want my palette to be uh, set three so i can say set three and if i run this now i get an error which is invalid name of palette maybe is capitals is it yeah it's capitals right so what this is telling me now is that I have a balanced data set that has about, it's not exactly 50% balanced, but it's quite balanced. I have about 500, I don't know, 60 uh, loans that are actually bad loans. And I have about 470 loans that are actually good loans. So the reason we do this is that we always want to investigate the distribution of our Y variable, which is the dependent variable so that we can see if our data set is in balance and then if we are actually if we actually need to take some uh, action to balance our data set by the way if you feel that you're getting enough value out of this video i would appreciate it if you click the like button and subscribe to my channel right the next thing we want to do is to loop through all of our features by our y variable which is this good loan just to see if there is a relationship and to do this, first of all, I need to set the features because I'm going to write the while loop now. So I can say features equals and to get the features that I'm going to loop through, I need the column names. So I can go back to row data and then print the column uh, dot columns and I can copy all of the features that I want to loop through and paste them in here. I actually want to remove our numeric features because going to be too much for our account plot and if you remember it's the loan amount and also the age if you watch part one video so if i run this now it works fine then i need to write a while loop so i can say uh sorry for loop so i can say for f which is feature in the features then i want to copy and paste this count this count plot i have up here down here and I also want to say my X is going to be the F so the feature and I also want to add the hue and my hue is going to be the um, good loan so which is going to be my Y variable so if I put this in here come on, oh, come on. and then if I run this 
it plots no it didn't plot everything because i also need to say plt dot show or plot i don't remember to show i think there we go it ran it um so now it starts with the first feature now which is the type of account and we can see that the type of account where we have no data the majority of the loans are actually not good loans so they are bad loans so this is actually i think it's going to be quite high this no data in terms of feature importance then when we have type a accounts we can see that the majority are actually approved so good loans and then if you have type b is almost 50 50 and then type c is about 50 percent then if we move on into what is this one the account history we can see that if it's critical then we have more no loans which is bad loans than uh, good loans if the account is average is about 50 percent and if it's good we have more uh, good loans than bad loans so account history as you can see i think it's going to be a good feature that is going to help us get a good performance moving on we can go through all the features however because we cannot uh, imagine having thousands and thousands of features you can't possibly go through all the visualizations to choose the good features uh, another way of doing it is uh, the feature importance uh, down here which i'm going to show you later on in this video how to do that right before we move into feature selection first we want to turn our categorical variables into numeric representation so we can actually apply calculations on it and maths because you cannot do calculations on a character or a string value it has to be in numeric presentation zeros or one so you can apply maths and then feed it into your algorithm so to do this we're going to use a function called get dummies which is what we've used in our previous uh, linear regression tutorial so i can say pd dot get dummies i'm going to say my data is going to be my row data so i can copy the row data and then the columns equals i'm going to first start with one column so i'm going to do the first column so i can explain you how it works and then do the rest so the first column is going to be the type of the account so i can copy it paste it and then run it so we can see the data down here i also want to run the initial row data data frame so you can see what changed right so what do we have here in the original data frame we started with type of account as a first column and then account history in the new uh, data frame we start with account history which is the second column and type of account is gone it's vanished now this is because we've broken down the type of account into one two three four distinct new columns and these four new columns is actually the columns we found out in video part one which is the type of account has four distinct elements and this is the no data type a type b and type c which is what we see down here is no data type a type b and type c and what they have now they have zeros or ones so the first row you can see that the type of account was no data actually all of them all of the first five rows had no data so the first five rows down here have a one on no data and zero on everything else but if we keep scrolling i'm sure we're going to find here they have one over here so the type of account is c etc etc now what we have to do is to apply the same thing into the rest of the uh, categorical features which all of them we've also we've actually have them up here into features so i can copy the features that i have here and put it into columns and it should work let's test it uh, no it does not work because i have to remove this square brackets there we go it works now so it kept the two numeric features which is the loan and the age and everything else now is being turned into a numeric representation which is zeros or ones we've actually let the good loan outside because this is going to be our y variable and we don't want this one to break into two new columns so what i have to do now is pass this data back to a new row data sorry a new data frame so i'm going to say new row data and i also want to print the shape so i want to print the shape before so the shape before was we actually have the code and i'm going to scroll up and copy the code because i'm lazy so there we go so this is a previous shape and the new shape now is going to be the row data shape just to investigate it 
There we go. So we can see that before we only had 14 uh, features. Now, because we're breaking down uh, categorical features into numeric representation, we actually have 49 new features. Not new, but we have 49 features in our data frame. Right, the next thing I wanna do is to change our Y variable, which is the good loan into zeros and ones. So if it's uh, not a good loan, it's gonna be no, it's gonna be zero. If it's a yes, it's gonna be one. To do this, I can uh, copy the data frame and then select the column I wanna change, which is gonna be the good loan. Copy, paste, and then I can say uh, where the good loan, so I can copy the same thing again and say equals, and then I have yes here. Uh, I can say equals uh, one, and then I can copy the same thing, paste it below, and then I'm gonna have no, I'm gonna put zero. And if I run this, let's see, it worked. Additionally, if I visualize the data just to see, oops, just to see how it worked, I'm gonna run the whole thing. Uh, we can see that here where we have good loan, we have zero. This is because uh, the first one was not a good loan. So it was no, 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 as you can see. And then if we scroll down, we have yeses here and there. Right, moving down to feature selection now. The reason we go through this step is because in some cases, you have thousands and thousands of features and it's going to take you too much computational power and computational time to include all those features in your machine learning model. So what you can do is that you can select the most important features that actually affect your Y variable the most. And to do this, there is a function called uh, feature importances into from tree based estimators, where it tells you how much each feature contributes to your Y variable. What's the feature importance? And to do this, the steps are that we have to split our data into X and Y. Then we need to run a tree based estimator, either decision trees or random forest. And then we're going to run the feature importance function. Now, please know that I'm not going to explain how this feature importance works, what the maths are, but I'm going to have two links down here in the description. I highly recommend you go and read how feature important works, how cross entropy works and how information gain works. Right. To split our data now, I have to say X equals and then select my data frame, new row data. And then I, I need to say dot drop. So first of all, my X is going to be everything apart the Y variable. So I need to drop the uh, column, which is called, uh, what's the name of it? Good loan. Sorry. Copy, paste, and I also need to say comma axis equals one. And I do need the values. So this is going to be a vector. So if I run this and if I view it quickly, come on, X run, there we go, it's a vector. Then I need to have my Y, which is gonna be Y equals, and then Y is just going to be this column. So good loan, so I can copy this, paste it. And then this is my Y. Additionally, I wanna make sure that my Y is an integer. So I can say Y dot as type int, and I need to pass it back into Y. Maybe there is an underscore there, I don't know it's correct. Um, and then what I want to do is to print the shapes. So I can say print just to test uh, they are being uh, separated correctly. So I need the X dot shape and I also need the Y dot shape. Y here, Sorry, Y run, there we go. So what we can see is that in our first X independent variables, we have 48 columns which is all the columns we have up here. And then we have one more column, which is column Y, which is uh, our dependent variable, which is the good loan. Next, I want to initialize a tree based estimator. So I can go into this link I have here, which is the official documentation of decision trees. Here is where you can read about how the decision tree works and all the parameters it takes, all the attributes and all the methods functions down here. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to copy this here. So how you call it. So I'm going to paste it down here. Uh, and then I'm going to name it decision uh, tree equals decision tree classifier. I want the random state to be 15. Let's say so we can reproduce results. I also want to go back 
and select the criterion to be entropy uh, so i can actually run the um, feature importance again you should read in the i have a link down here to learn how decision trees and how the entropy and information gain works so you can understand feature importance so i'm going to say criterion equals and i'm going to put entropy so i go back entropy entropy i paste it in and i also want to control the max depth to avoid overfeeding uh, but i don't know how much i'm going to put i'm going to put 10 right and i also want to feed it now so dt dot fit into my x and my y and if i run this there we go it worked fine no error right to run the feature importances now what i have to do is that i have to say for i comma column in enumerate and here i have to put all my x variables so all of this uh, and then i need to say print and i can say the feature importance or and then here is going to be the first column so my first column uh, and then i can say is and here is where i'm going to put the actual feature importance and i can say format open brackets the first is going to be the column because i'm going to go through all loop through all the columns and the next one is going to be the feature importance so to call feature importance now i can go into the documentation again as we said before scroll down into attributes and copy this feature importance attribute over here which is returning the feature importances so i can paste it here i need to put the classifier name at the beginning so dt and then i also need to put which column i'm going to go for which feature sorry importance which is going to be this i over here so if i put i here and run this we have the feature importances for all the features however because it's not really clear now to select the ones with the highest feature importance what i want to do is to add them in a data frame and then order them and then select the ones with the highest values to do this now i can initialize two empty lists at the top the first one is going to be the feature importance column uh, equals empty the second one is going to be the actual feature importance and what i can do is that down here i can say fi call dot append and into brackets i'm going to put the column so this is going to save the column name and then fi dot append down here and then into brackets i'm going to save the feature importance so if i run this what this did now is that into if i run fi call it saved the column name so it started from loan amount age type blah 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 and then feature importance it saved the actual uh, number so let me just show you what it did actually if i run this down here which is which i have to create a data frame you can see is all the column names and then the, the feature importance empty list here you can see is all the numbers so to create the data frame i'm gonna have to zip them together so i can say zip i need the column first comma then i need the fi second and then i'm gonna save it into a feature importance df let's say equals and then after this i want to pass this into a data frame so i can say fi df equals pd dot data frame i need to put this zip first and then comma and therefore columns equals uh, i need two columns uh, first one is the feature and the second one is the feature importance if i run this and if i visualize it there we go now we managed to put the data in a data frame the next thing i want to do is to order this new data frame by feature importance and to do this i can say uh, feature importance data frame dot sort values and i want to sort the values by feature importance and i also want to have ascending equals false if i remember correctly let's check this one false close run uh, it did not work because of the bracket there we go yeah it's false correct i also want to reset the index so you can see this index now i want a new one uh, right 
Right, so what this is telling me now is that account savings from zero to 200, so this is the binary classification zero or one, is the most, is the feature that contributes the most. So it gives you the most information gain when it comes to um, uh, predicting if it's going to be a good loan or a bad loan. Then we have account history, which is equally uh, strong. And then we have the loan amount. Remember, we said at video part one, that actually loan amount and age are going to be good in feature importances. And all the way down here, where we have about, I don't know, 10 feature importances here that do not contribute anything at all into our Y variable, if it's a good loan or not. So what we can do now is that we can save the column names that we want to use for our machine learning model, which is going to be everything up until 40 here, and then exclude anything that has zero because they don't contribute anything towards our Y variable. And to do this, I need to create the columns to keep, which is basically, by the way, I need to pass this uh, sort values back in the data frame. There we go. Now I need to select the uh, columns. So if I say col uh, features, sorry, features, and I need to select the features from zero to 40, if I remember correctly, let's check this out. So zero to 40 goes all the way down to uh, resident status renting. And if I run the whole data frame again, if we scroll down to 40 is uh, resident status for renting, there we go. So we want to keep this in because it has some feature importance and anything else we don't need. So correctly, I said from zero to 40. So what I can do is that I want, I want to create a new uh, uh, object, which is going to be columns to keep. Uh, keep equals and then I pass them in there we go so next when we are going to split our raw data down here we can use this column to keep to only select the features so the columns that are actually uh, have an impact on our y variable by the way if you feel that you're getting enough value out of this video I would really appreciate it if you click that like button subscribe to my channel and enable notifications if you haven't done already right some notes now before we move into splitting our raw data is that please note that we have not normalized or scaled our data, which is a, a step that you would commonly do into data pre-processing phase. But I've explained, I think I haven't explained in the video, but uh, we do not need to normalize the data when you're running standard uh, logistic regression. Uh, and the next point is that we have not done any feature engineering, so we have not created any new columns. Again, this is a step you would usually do in the data pre-processing phase, we have not done any joins just because uh, the raw data provided is already brought together. Uh, usually in real life scenarios, you will have to join multiple different uh, data frames together. And additionally, we have not done any aggregation as our data was already aggregated. Again, all these are uh, steps that you, you would usually do in a data pre-processing phase. Right, moving on to the next step now, which is to split our raw data using the whole out validation technique. But before we do that, I just want to quickly print the shapes here just to show you something. So I want to print the shape of our raw data, which is our data frame that has all the raw data we will use to train our model. We can see that we have a total of 1000 observations and 49 columns. However, if you remember on the step before in the feature important selection, we said that we only want to keep the first 40 features or columns or, or variables, which is all the same thing, that actually affect our Y dependent variable, which is whether it's going to be a good loan or a bad loan. So this is why we created this column to keep. So what we can do is that I can copy this quickly, paste it up down here and into square brackets, I'm going to paste the columns to keep data frame that we created in the step before. So if I run this quickly, we can see that we only have 40 columns or variables or features into this print statement over here. So what I have to do now is I have to take this and pass it into our X, which is what we are going to use to train our model. So going down here where we have split the raw data, I can say X equals, and then I can copy this and then paste it here and then run it and then actually run X to inspect it. So as we can see now in X, we have the first 40 columns that we actually selected over here above in the feature selection stage. Additionally, 
we also want to make this x to be um, a numpy array so we can actually fit it into our machine learning model and apply calculations on it so to do this we can just say dot values at the end here and if i run this now you can see this is uh, being transformed into numpy arrays right moving on now we want to uh, specify our y which is our dependent variable which is what we are trying to predict and if you remember our y is whether it's a good column or not if i remember correctly let me quickly inspect it so if i run uh, dot head we can see this is the good loan so this is our y this is what we are trying to predict which is zeros and ones so i can copy this sorry i can copy this paste it and then select just our y which is the good loan and if i run this now and if i also run y we can see that it's actually uh, it's actually an object i need to convert it into a numpy array or an integer number so i can also say y equals uh, y dot as type and then int and then if i run y again it's basically the same thing but now the d type is integer is not an object so now i can use this x and this y to feed it into uh, our machine learning algorithm and train our model so it's going to know in uh, how to predict whether the loan is going to be a good loan or a bad loan in future uh, observations Additionally, I also want to print the shapes quickly. So I can say x dot shape, and then uh, I want to print the y dot shape. If I run these two, we can see that we have 1,000 observations and 40 uh, columns or 40 features. And here we have 1,000 observations and no only one column, which is which is whether it's going to be a good loan or a bad loan. Right. The next step now is to use the holdout validation technique, which is what we have explained in the first video of these tutorials. Uh, which is uh, where we split our raw data into 70, 20, and 10%, or 80 to 20. It's up to you how you want to split your, split your data. And the reason we do that is because we want to train our model on the 70%, let's say, and then on the rest 20% or 10%, we want to test our algorithm or our uh, model or how it performs on unseen data. So data that we have not used to train the model, right? To do this, I'm going to use the official documentation of uh, holdout validation, which I have the document down here. So if you visit this link, you can read how the train test split uh, function works and also how to call it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down to the code. I'm going to copy the code and then paste it uh, here. So I want to split this uh, test, which is going to be uh, my X. I have it here, you see my X and my Y, my X and my Y, and I want to split it into four subsets, which is the X train, X test, Y train, Y test. I want to use, I actually, I'm actually going to say um, uh, test size, so sorry, train size. So I want my train size to be uh, 80%, so I'm going to say 0 0.8, and I want my test size to be uh, 20%, and the random state is just a random number so you can replicate these results. And I also want to apply this once more. So what I'm going to do is because if you remember on the first video, I've explained that I also want to split my data into uh, 70, 20 and 10. And the reason I want this 10% is after we do our hybrid parameter tuning, I want to use that 10% to test my uh, model on a totally totally unseen data after the hyperparameter tuning so this is why i want to have three subsets now so what i have done until now is that i have split it into two subsets which is the x test uh, sorry x train and uh, x test i also want to do x train and x valid so the validation which is the last 10 percent so to do this i can use my x train as an x over here and my y train as a y over here and then i can change the x train sorry i can change the x test to be x valid sorry i'm gonna i'm gonna explain you uh, when we print them uh, everything at the end it's gonna make more sense so i can say um x valid and then y valid and the way I want to split those is that I want the 90% to be the uh, train and then 10% to be the validation data set. So if I run this again, 
it works fine the last thing i want to do is to print all the shapes so i can say uh, print and then i'm going to use all the x's first so x dot shape copy this paste it three times uh, one two one uh, two and three and i'm going to change this to x train to x test and then x valid and then i need the uh, y train y test and y valid so if I print the shapes now, we can see we have uh, six subsets, uh, but it's actually three because uh, one of them has the X's or independent variables and the other one is the Y. And the way it works is that we will train our data using uh, these two. So the, the 720 uh, and the 720 over here. So this is our independent variables and this is our Y, which is how we're going to train our model. We're going to test our model into these 200 uh, unseen observations and check if there are corresponding Y variables, how well did we predict them. Then we're going to uh, adjust uh, the hybrid parameters. So we're going to tune our model. And after we select the best hybrid parameters, we're actually going to test our model again on totally new unseen data, which is going to be these 80 observations over here and then these ATYs over here to test the accuracy or the logarithmic uh, loss. And before we move into step number seven, which is what is logistic regression, we just want to quickly investigate the distribution of all of our Ys. So these three subsets down here, just to make sure that we have balanced data sets, uh, uh, dependent variables and not imbalanced data sets. Uh, to do this, I can just say AX equals SNS dot, I'm gonna use account plot, so count, count plot and I'm going to say my x equals the I'm going to start with y train and then I also want to use uh, palette equals uh, set three if I run this we can see that the distribution is actually not that bad it's okay it's almost 50 50 then if I quickly check the y test run this one this one is almost the same and then the y valid there we go, distribution is okay. So now we can move on to the next step, which is what is logistic regression. Right, moving on to step number seven now, what is logistic regression? So logistic regression is a famous statistical method for predicting two or more binary classes and not a continuous number. So if you remember on the previous tutorial where, we, where we've done the linear regression tutorial, we were actually predicting a number, 2000 or 3000 or 4000. Now, uh, with logistic regression, we are trying to predict a binary classification. So whether there is a zero or a one, whether there is a dog or a cat, whether there is a good loan or a bad loan, whether this account is gonna be a churn or is not gonna be a churn, whether this email is gonna be a spam or not a spam. So you can see it's a classification. So logistic regression is used for classification problems, not continuous numbers uh, prediction. And to make it work now, we have to transform our linear regression line into a logistic regression curve so we can get a good fit of our data. And just to explain this picture below, on the x-axis here, we have our credit score for both graphs. On the y-axis, we have the loan status. So zero, as you can see, is a bad loan and one is a good loan. And if we plot our data, this is how it's going to look on both graphs. See all the red dots. So if we were to fit a linear line on it, we can see that we can't really predict whether it's going to be a good loan or a bad loan because this linear line is just predicting the number. So let's say if the if we have a credit score of 400, it's actually going to predict 0 0.2 uh, as a number. However, what we have to do is to fit this logistic regression curve, which is the logistic regression uh, algorithm, how it works. So we can separate our data and we can easily predict if it's going to be a, a good loan. So here we have one or a bad loan here where we have zero. And the linear regression, sorry, and the formulas now, if you can see the two formulas down here, what's very interesting to uh, observe is that in the logistic regression formula, we are actually using the linear regression formula over here. So we take this formula, which is the linear regression line, and we put it into our uh, natural logarithmic base, which is over e to the power of our linear regression formula. And we also say one divided by one plus this logarithmic base, just because we're trying to 
get a very very small number between zero and one and just to explain you better how it works is that we feed an S-shaped uh, logistic function into our uh, data and then this curve, this S-shaped curve tells us the probability if a loan is going to be good or bad. So after we feed this uh, logistic regression formula over here, what this is going to give us is going to give us the probability or the logarithmic uh, odds. And uh, what this is telling us is the higher the credit score is, so as you can see, we moved to 600, 700, 800. You can see the odds on the uh, on this axis here, the y-axis, actually it's zero or one, but you can see that the higher the credit score is, the better odds we have that it's going to be a good loan. And the lower the credit score is, so as you can see, this 100, 200, 300, or 400, the higher the probability is going to be that this loan is going to be zero. It's going to be a bad loan. Uh, and then just to explain you how the sigmoid function works, which is actually this uh, calculation over here, is also called the sigmoid function. A sigmoid function is an S-shaped curve or a sigmoid curve mathematical function that ranges from minus infinity to positive infinity. And for logistic regression, we actually use the logistic function. So there are other sigmoid functions too out there, but this calculation for or formula we have over here is actually the uh, logistic function, which is the same as the logistic function over here, if you see the two uh, formulas. So the way it works now is that it takes any real value number, as we said, for example, this dot over here, the 100, and it squishes it into a number or a probability between zero and one. So it doesn't matter what the, our X is going to be. So what this uh, linear regression formula here is going to be. The number, the output is always going to be between zero and one. It's always going to be a, whether it's a good loan or a bad loan in our case. And the last thing to note over here is that the decision boundary is 0 0.5. So what this means is that if we get that the probability of this data point over here is 0 0.3, then because 0 0.3 is less than 0 0.5, then it's going to assign it into a bad loan straight away. It's going to be zero, the outcome. And if the probability of this data point, for example, is 0 0.7, just because 0 0.7 is above 0 0.5, which is our decision boundary, then the outcome or the Y is going to be one, it's going to assign it into a good loan. And this is how logistic regression works. Additionally, going back here, you remember for the linear regression to, to find the line of best fit for linear regression, we were using the least square error methods. Uh, for the logistic regression now, because we don't have this uh, idea or these uh, applications of residuals and calculating the residuals and then calculating the least square error, we use the maximum likelihood estimation to find the best fit. And the way this works, I have a very good picture here that explains exactly how it works. So the first step now is to feed a line, a random uh, a probability curve, a sigmoid line, as we used to do with the least square error. So we feed the first line, then we calculate the likelihood of the loan being bad or good. So we can start with this data point. We calculate the likelihood, and the likelihood is basically going to be this uh, probability or log odds over here. So we apply this formula on this data point, and then we get the likelihood. Then we repeat the same process for all the data points we have. And then the next step now is to multiply all the likelihoods together. And this is going to give us the likelihood of the data given the line. So it's going to give us one number for the first line. So let's say the first um, uh, green line. Let me scroll in. Uh, the next step now is to shift our line, as you can see over here, and then calculate a new likelihood. And then we shift the line again and we calculate a new likelihood of the data. And we keep doing this again and again and again until we find the line with the maximum likelihood, which is going to be the blue line uh, uh, that we see over here. And then we're going to select this line as our uh, logistic regression. Uh, for the maximum likelihood estimation for discrete variables now, for, because uh, what, uh, what I have explained here is a continuous variable, is a bit more co complex. It works the way we perform t-test. 
but it's going to take a lot of time to explain so i'm going to have i have a video down here where you can actually watch how the maximum likelihood estimation works on discrete variables the good news now is that we don't actually have to go through all these calculations manually when all the formulas we've just explained because we're going to use sklearn and sklearn provides a function for logistic regression so all we have to do is just call it feed it with our raw data that we've created on the previous steps and then we can get our prediction straight away which is brilliant it's amazing how easy it is to run a machine learning model these days however you need to understand how each uh, each machine learning model works because all of them work in different ways some of them are appropriate for some cases and some of them are appropriate for different cases right so i'm going to stop this video here and i'm going to finish the rest of the tutorial in the next video which is going to be part three video of logistic regression in the next video we're going to we are going to go through what uh, sorry how to run our logistic regression model how to evaluate it different ways of evaluating our model how to adjust our hybrid parameters and select the best performing parameters and then how to run predictions on our model with the best uh, with the hybrid parameters that we have actually selected that perform the best uh, right so i hope you enjoyed this video and you've gained enough value out of this video and if you feel like you did i would really appreciate it if you click that like button and subscribe to my channels uh, channel sorry additionally if you can enable notifications so you know when i'm going to upload the next video which is going to be probably in a week's time if you have any questions let me know in the comments below otherwise thank you very much for watching this video and i'm going to see you in the next video